To wrong those we hate is to add fuel to our hatred. Conversely, to treat an enemy with magnanimity is to blunt our hatred for him. Passionate hatred can give meaning and purpose to an empty life. We lie the loudest when we lie to ourselves. Rudeness is the weak man's imitation of strength. Disappointment is a sort of bankruptcy, the bankruptcy of a soul that extends too much in hope and expectation. In times of change, learners inherit the earth, while the learned find themselves beautifully equipped to deal with a world that no longer exists. Every great cause begins as a movement, becomes a business, and eventually degenerates into a racket. Anger is the prelude to courage. When people are free to do as they please, they usually imitate each other. People who bite the hand that feeds them usually lick the boot that kicks them. The act of self-denial seems to confer on us the right to be harsh and merciless towards others. When people are bored, it is primarily with their own selves that they are bored. We are told that talent creates its own opportunities, but it sometimes seems that intense desire creates not only its own opportunities, but its own talents. It still holds true that man is most uniquely human when he turns obstacles into opportunities. Absolute faith corrupts as absolutely as absolute power. Where there is the necessary technical skill to move mountains, there is no need for the faith that moves mountains. It is startling to realize how much unbelief is necessary to make belief possible. You can discover what your enemy fears most by observing the means he uses to frighten you. To be fully alive is to feel that everything is possible. You can never get enough of what you don't really need. The greatest weariness comes from work not done. Far more crucial than what we know or do not know is what we do not want to know. The opposite of a religious fanatic is not the fanatical atheist, but the gentle cynic who cares not whether there is a God or not. You can never get enough of what you don't need to make you happy. The search for happiness is one of the chief sources of unhappiness. The quality of ideas seems to play a minor role in mass movement leadership. What counts is the arrogant gesture, the complete disregard of the opinion of others, the single-handed defiance of the world. Our greatest pretenses are built up not to hide the evil and the ugly in us, but our emptiness. The hardest thing to hide is something that is not there. To a man utterly without a sense of belonging, mere life is all that matters. It is the only reality in an eternity of nothingness, and he clings to it with shameless despair. An empty head is not really empty. It is stuffed with rubbish. Hence, the difficulty of forcing anything into an empty head. The permanent misfits can find salvation only in a complete separation from the self. 
and they usually find it by losing themselves in the compact collectivity of a mass movement. The beginning of thought is in disagreement, not only with others, but also with ourselves. Scratch an intellectual, and you will find a would-be aristocrat who loathes the sight, the sound, and the smell of common folk. You can never get enough of what you don't really need. There would be no society if living together depended upon understanding each other. We can be absolutely certain only about things we do not understand. The weakness of a soul is proportionate to the number of truths that must be kept from it. Every extreme attitude is a flight from the self. In the shaping of life, chance and the ability to respond to chance are everything. The game of history is usually played by the best and the worst over the heads of the majority in the middle. It's not actual suffering, but the taste of better things which excites people to revolt. It is loneliness that makes the loudest noise. This is true of men as of dogs. Kindness can become its own motive. We are made kind by being kind. Hoffer's books are The True Believer Thoughts on the Nature of Mass Movements The State of Mental Grief and Other Parables The Tribulation of Change The Mood of Our Time Working and Thinking on the Waterfront A Journal June 1958 to May 1959 First Things, Last Things Reflections on the Human Condition In Our Time Before Hibernation Between Satan and the Dragon The Best Essays and Proverbs of Eric Hoffer And Imaginary Reality